What do you like about playing new video games? Games are the most interactive medium ever. The level of choice each game gives the player is mind-boggling. They let you experience so many different things that you'd never be able to. But how do you get to that experience? There's that old quote by George R. R. Martin. I have lived a thousand lives, and I've loved a thousand loves. I've walked to distant worlds and seen the end of time because I read. I love this quote because books provide a beautiful escape from reality where you get to feel and live those things, all from the comfort of a couch or a bed. You get to live others' lives and emotions. But with games, you are in the experience. You are the experience. With that level of immersion comes a certain difficulty. How do you lower someone that far into a story? With books or movies, the first couple chapters or scenes may drag as the world is built without interest. The characters unknown and uncared for. But as the author builds a connection and reasons to care, suddenly that all-knowing feeling of exposition disappears. All that should be left is simply the story and the world it exists in. Games, on the other hand, have an entirely different task. They have to familiarize the player with how to interact with the world in the first place. How they should act, or what they should do, even what they can do. Some games do this better than others, but I decided to go through it and find out. I picked three random games from Game Pass to make sure I got my monthly's money's worth, and here we are. Also note that there will be no major spoilers for any of these games. Side note, I really need to read more. Fittingly, the first and most exciting game to get into was Outer Wilds. This little space game has relatively blown up over the video essay space. Its design and progression masterfully executed and recognized as such. You play as an alien astronaut exploring their solar system when after 22 minutes of doing such, the system's solar star implodes in a fiery blaze of a supernova and it destroys everything you've come to know. But you wake back up perfectly fine on your home planet, about to launch your ship into space again. And that's the premise of the game. You have to literally try and save your entire race and solar system. The weight of the world is literally on your shoulders. If that isn't one interesting introduction to a story, then I don't know. But that actually wasn't the first intro in the game. First, the game spent a previous 30 minutes introducing you into just interacting with the game. I don't think the 22 minute loop starts until after you launch, meaning time spent on your planet changes nothing. The first chunk of the game is spent doing just this. You have to figure out the launch sequence for your ship, which involves the player running around trying to ask their friends and family for it. The town is split into various open sections, from a cave to a museum. Through each of these sections, it introduces the player to the different mechanics of the game. Jetpacking in the caverns, reading in the museum. The entire journey is self-paced as it lets the player dictate how quick and how much of the tutorial space that the player interacts with. This ensures the player stays engaged compared to some other games' tutorials. This also familiarizes the player with the level of self-paced exploration which the game relies on. There is an objective story, but there are no set goals. It's purely based off of the motivation of the player. Find, explore, figure out what's happening. It's all up to you, and that can be quite daunting. Donut County takes all of two minutes to understand what's going on. The main protagonist, a raccoon, wants to get rid of somebody. So, magically, a hole appears and starts swallowing things. First, it starts with small things on the ground until it's big enough to swallow an entire person. The raccoon, after completing his task, gets a taste for swallowing people and decides to try and swallow the whole town. That's all there is. It's a very simple gameplay premise which allows the design team to innovate and evolve the concept along with the story in rather interesting ways instead of focusing on creating new systems entirely. The feeling of the game, even from the beginning, is satisfying. The slow, strategic, almost 
puzzle-like nature makes it calming and easy to get addicted to. The story develops in an almost comedic manner, where no character or story takes itself all too seriously. The atmosphere and cheery music, despite a supposedly horrid potential loss of town and life, makes it so the player never feels any realistic burden. This game has no interest in keeping the higher stakes of Outer Wilds, where every second counts. Even the changes in music and color in that game can mean you're running out of time, or you just missed out on a critical time-sensitive puzzle. Everything must be planned to a T in that game. Granted, it's controlled by the player's own desire, not the game, which makes it far more intriguing and more forgiving. However, in Donut County, the game is much more focused on a slow puzzle aspect of nature, not even into the second level, and there's already a new mechanic to explore. There's an object, specifically a hot air balloon, which is in your way. You have to keep devouring the place, but the balloon is blocking your path. So the question is, how do you get rid of the balloon? Well, there's a fire nearby, and the game expects you to do one of two things, either try to eat everything and figure it out by chance, which is what I did, or realize that fire makes hot air balloons elevate and ascend. After swallowing the fire and staying below the balloon, the heat will push it and the passenger into the sky. With the balloon gone, you mercilessly swallow the rest of the landscape, but not without a lesson or two. Anything you can consume can sometimes affect how you interact with the environment. And this game is chocked full of these innovations and aha moments. Every chance the game has, it changes how you can tackle the order of swallowing something. Don't take that out of context. And how you change the environment to do so. Raji, an ancient epic on the other hand, takes a jarringly different approach to both these games in introducing its own world and new mechanics. The game opens with the cinematic of what I'm guessing is traditional Hindu puppets depicting a story. Raji and her brother Gulu live life without their parents, but always have each other's backs. One day, while in their town, they are attacked and set upon by demons. The demons take Gulu and leave Raji for dead. The Hindu gods decide to give Raji the divine purpose of defeating these demons and saving Gulu. The intro to the game is devoid of any interaction, unlike our other two games, which leads to an overall overwhelming sense of confusion. The game space and medium is designed to include the player. That's what makes everything begin to feel familiar with the game and teach the common ways in which any game will interact with you, the player. Raji takes one look at this theme and sidesteps away. Once you're into the actual gameplay, something becomes abundantly clear. Through the movement of Raji, her responsiveness to your input is already and immediately stiff, just like the intro, but the animations of your movement feel buttery smooth, creating a sort of jointed movement. The leaps you make across several caverns in the opening section makes it clear the game prefers a sort of smooth, artsy flow rather than a particularly responsive, open-ended experience. All the while you begin to walk, the Hindu gods Vishnu and Durga omnisciently begin debating your actions and abilities within the tutorial itself. Even as they have called upon Raji to fulfill this role, they remain reluctant to trust a certain result. Thankfully, her confidence cannot be shaken as she cannot hear this, but as the player of this stiff, jointed, and now judged character, the space feels almost alienating, even more than before. Strange intros, stuck up mechanical introductions, but that's on purpose. As the game progresses and you are introduced into the actual combat, the flow is completely interrupted again and again with each new mechanic. It isn't like Outer Wilds or Donut County, where the game prompts the player to figure out what to do with a new item. No, the player is directly stopped dead in their tracks and told about the weapon by the two gods, followed by a literal tutorial with an astral figure telling you to mimic its motions of how to fight enemies. Every time the game introduces anything new to you, it's either through another puppet, cutscene, or this direct pause of a tutorial. 
It honestly feels discordant with the medium, like an action movie with the clumsy writer that pauses to explain everything between the smooth fight sequences. But that's exactly the point. The style is reminiscent of a literary epic, stories told by ancient cultures which are often exciting, thrilling, action stories about their own history or morals, but with weird pauses and narrations which could feel alienating to written works but not oral narratives. The entire game's aesthetic even points to the inspiration. From the stylistic pause menu to even the upgrade menu, it's all through these atmospheric stylings. While the other two games may go for a smooth gameplay experience and use the medium to its fullest and easiest immersions, Raji is much more interested in giving you the feel and experience of an epic within the trappings of a game space. It's quite brilliant. The genre is so different from what we've come to expect that it feels strange, alienating. The fact that this game can pull it off is really exciting. Each of these games delivers a completely different way of immersion. Raji is focused on trying to get you to feel a sort of meta story. Donut County is interested in the mechanical creativity, and Outer Wilds is interested in the harmony of Ludo narratives. However, each of these styles can be draining in their own right. Raji can feel too disconnected at times, and like the game is uninterested in keeping your attention, while Donut County can feel far too repetitive because of its simple nature. Outer Wilds, with its masterfully crafted exploration, can feel all too aimless if you don't hit the story beats in the perfect order. But all of these have their reasons. Raji's disconnected nature serves a narrative purpose of portraying an epic in addition to the several nuances to the weapons, like using pillars in the environment to add ingenuity and expression to the combat, even within its scripted parameters. Donut County doesn't last for long, and uses things such as the Trashpedia, basically an encyclopedia written from the point of a raccoon, to add flavor to the context of the world, even an innovative use of menu interactivity to the point where even something as simple as opening blinds feels nuanced in this game. Everywhere you look, you'll find some new addition to the game. In Outer Wilds, while that feeling can never be fully reconciled, it is designed to create this sort of lost, overwhelming sensation. You are literally trying to save the world. It's going to be hard. There will be dead ends and frustrations, but with the use of the time loop mechanic. Not only does it put everything into perspective each time, but there are also several game menus which always track your progression to ensure you see the physical progression you make each and every time, even if it's only a little bit. The loop gives you a great and natural stop point to each play session as to feel unintrusive to the narrative and give the player breaks if they need to avoid the whelming existentialism. Each game approaches narrative and mechanical introduction in vastly different ways, but every one hooks the player's interest. They deliver a new life, a new experience, a new love, and a new way of even looking at the world via these narratives and systems. And isn't that the point of stories? to experience anew. Thank you so much for watching this video. Wow, another long one. The editing for this is gonna be fantastic. And thank you to Game Pass for making this challenge so much easier. It's truly such a bargain and you get so many games for so little. I'm not sponsored or anything, but it just, it's amazing. While I was making this video, I discovered something weird. I like to explore games. I like to discover everything there is to discover. But there's a weird limit in my brain when I just stop. It's just boring and almost suffocating for me. It's really strange. So I guess I like to explore it to a point. I don't know. Anyway, on to the recommended channel. This week, I'm recommending Misspelled Moves. They make in-depth reviews of video games, focusing on a certain perspective they gain from each game, as well as the game's overall quality. 
If you enjoyed these mechanical discussions of feelings and games, definitely go check out their channel. Which of these games sounded the most interesting? What's your favorite game introduction ever? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe for more pop culture and gaming content. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye!